Hi there, wanted to do a quick follow up video on the electronic load uh, tutorial that I had posted uh, a few days ago. One of the things that was a consistent feedback to me was that I basically abandoned it without having tried very hard to get uh, some higher speed response times out of it. It was still in the very low milliseconds, but nevertheless in milliseconds. And some of the power supplies that you might want to test with this require that you are able to drive them much, much quicker. Um, some of the old Agilent um, HP power supplies, for instance, have a specification of about a 50 microsecond transient response time for a one amp shift in load uh, to return back to its normal state, and then uh, both in the positive direction and in the negative direction. The Keithley power supply that I have, of course, is not um, even close to that. It's measured about 150 milliseconds for its response time for a one amp transient load to get back to normal. But then we're talking about two very different types of power supply, both in uh, price performance and also in the generation and the intended uh, use of them. Nevertheless, I took the challenge and um, thought, well, what can I do with this DC load that I showed you last week? and how, how can I improve it? So I went out and um, purchased a few small value capacitors. Uh, these are in the region of about 100 picofarads to about four or 500 picofarads because I didn't have any and I knew that in order to reduce the response times, I'm gonna have to put smaller capacitors in and things like that. And there are some limitations in how fast you can make this go because of the uh, small number of components we're using, we've got a high powered MOSFET which has quite a capacitive load on its gates. We're not using a MOSFET driver um, circuit at all to improve the current drive into the gate. We're limiting um, the design to just simply have the output of an op amp, which uh, in the case of the ones that I'm using, they're typically in the sort of like 50, 60, 70 milliamp range that it can drive. So anyway, given that I didn't want to make the circuit any more complicated really than it already was, and I wanted to keep it simple for anybody to be able to build, and that you know driving it up to the 50 microsecond transient um, load change times and things is really more of a niche market and not many people would need that. I thought I would try to not increase the cost by more than a few pennies and uh, see how well I could make this go. So I think I've done pretty good. Now I wanna just show you some of the changes I did and how they if, uh, impact it. One of the things I did was I changed the uh, op amp from a TLC uh, 2142 to a TLE 2142. We'll look at this data sheet as to what the differences are there. Uh, and also I simply applied a couple of capacitors into some uh, specific locations to decouple some of the noise that was being introduced by the high switching of the MOSFET and also to improve the drive to the MOSFET gate without really uh, increasing the DC quiescent current uh, into it when you've got static conditions by using a bypass capacitor on the MOSFET gate drive resistor. So anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get to the breadboard and the circuit and I'll show you what I did. So if you remember the circuit that I showed you last time, nothing on this left-hand side here has changed. So I've uh, just, it's out of, out of shot right now, but um, I had the TLC2142 and I've changed it to a TLE2142. Um, the divider is exactly the same. What I've also done is I put a 390 picofarad capacitor between the junction of the divider and ground. And what this has done is it's allowed me to decouple some of the high frequency um, noise that was being introduced into the op amp and therefore um, causing a little bit of oscillation during the transitions uh, between high and low. And the other one is I've um, put a 4.2 nanofarad in the feedback. Uh, anything around that value will be okay in this feedback anyway. And the other thing I've done is I put a 10 nanofarad capacitor in parallel to the 100 ohm drive resistor going to the MOSFET. I did try reducing the resistor itself down to about 10 ohms and a couple of different values in between there, but it really didn't make a lot of difference. And it actually in some cases made it worse because now, now you've got, um, you know, the, the, the capacitor is providing a little bit of ability to improve the rise time into the MOSFET, but it's not allowing too much um, excessive current to flow once it's got that initial um, charge going as it's building up. So it's, it's used a little bit for decoupling as well, 
but uh, it's, it works very, very well in this case. And I, I can show you the difference of the waveforms between having the capacitor across there or reducing the value of the resistor. Uh, the MOSFET's exactly the same one. The uh, current sense is exactly the same. So really that's the only changes is that I put this capacitor across here and I've introduced this decoupling one down here. Um, the other one that I did, um, well, I think I had something like 100 nanofarad um, in there and now it's 4.2. So uh, yes, I just realized I've got the capacitor lying around here somewhere that I pulled out of there. Sorry, I've gone through so many iterations of uh, trying different things. I lost track of what I had in there originally. Anyway, so between reducing this capacitor for the integrator, for the feedback, um, adding the decoupler and putting a bypass on the drive to the MOSFET, um, it's got to the point now where my rise time is probably around 50 microseconds uh, and the same as a full time and there's very little um, noise. Obviously if I'm driving it with a very narrow pulse of say 100 microseconds then the any ringing and things that are on the edges will be more notable on an oscilloscope. Um, but that's not normally what you would typically have uh, going onto a power supply or something like that. Is something that's got a you know a two or three nanosecond rise time and a period of only uh, you know a few hundred microseconds. Normally it's going to be a lot bigger than that. And I'm also um, driving this thing um, with a two amp transient change between uh, zero and two amps load on and off. So it's all, you know, normally your noise is going to be a lot lower than that level as well. You're not going to be switching that fast. So anyway, I think the, um, the overall improvements are, are quite worthy to keep. So I'm, when I build up the board, I'm actually going to use these new, new values in the circuit that I build. And I'll make sure I have plenty of room on any PCBs that I might design to allow um, playing around with different values so you can tune it to your own requirements. Anyway, let's... Um, get to the oscilloscope so I can show you what the differences are. The first thing I'll show you is just changing the TLC2142 to a TLE2142, what that makes. So with the TLC2142, this is the waveform I'm getting out. I'm feeding a 500 microsecond pulse at 100 hertz, uh, two amp shift in voltage. As you can see, I've got the current is the yellow one, the arbitrary waveform generator is the blue one. Uh, the gate voltage is the green one and my vo load volts is the um, purple one. So if I just pull out the resistor that is in parallel to the um, gate drive resistor, it'll settle down, as you can see. Um, but we've still got this ringing and things on the sides here. Now. In order to improve things, if I now turn this off and put the TLE in, um, you'll see the difference in this. I'm just going to put a, um, going to take a snapshot of this so that I can include a good quality picture in the video output. Okay, so all I have to do to save images to the um, memory stick is hit the save button. That's done. So I'm just going to switch this back now to the TLE and you'll see, you'll see the difference in the waveforms. So this is the TLE uh, op amp in there now instead of the TLZ ver C version. And the one thing you'll notice right away is that the um, response times are much faster but there's still some ringing and things here. Now this one also has the ability to drive a lot better. So if I put the um, capacitor back across the drive resistor that goes from the output of the op amp to the gate of the uh, MOSFET, you'll see the difference it makes. So I'm going to do this while it's turned on so that you can see it immediately reflected on the oscilloscope here. All right, so that's, that's it in. You can see this edge here is a little slower. Um, sorry, slower. So I'm just going to pull it out now. So you can see here the edges here, the ringing is worse. So I think, you know, for what it's doing, it's worth to keep it here because it is reducing the ringing on those outputs. And that in itself is definitely worthwhile having. All right, as you can see there, as I take it in and out on this edge right here, you can see it coming in and going out. Let me just increase the time base a little bit to make it more obvious. And slide this over. All right, so if I show you with that view, it'd be more obvious now if I take it out. 
Now you can see that reducing down nicely. But aside from that, it's having very little effect on anything else on the uh, circuit. So that's going to stay. Now the other thing to change is the um, capacitor that is in the feedback loop. Right now we've got the 10 nanofarad. And originally I had a much, much bigger one, if I can find it. All right, it was uh, one of these big 0.1 nanofarads. And if I put that in there instead of the uh, 10, you'll see what it does to the signal. When I take it out, of course, it's going to go crazy because there's no uh, closing the feedback anymore. So let me just put in the uh, 100 nanofarad now. Uh, point, right? Now you can see here that the uh, rise and fall times are completely shot on this, all right? So can't use a big value like that. Of course, if you're running with a um, much bigger pulse, then you're not gonna notice that. You know, if I change this pulse width here, sorry, I was trying to put 10 milliseconds in, and of course I'm running at 100 hertz, so can't do that. So I changed it to five milliseconds. All right, you can see that the um, the slope is rather bad, you know, and for a regular kind of, um, just being able to put some kind of load on, it would probably do. But of course, if I change this capacitor now back to the smaller one, you'll see how much better it will be with a, um, much, see, the edges are much, much better. Of course, now because it is slower, we do have this um, ringing occurring now on this edge here that you can see. So if I just flip it back again, all right, there's still a little bit of ringing here, but of course, you know, you're, you're getting the extra ringing because of the low value capacitor there, but it is now increasing the uh, slew rate quite considerably. So I'm gonna go with the other value on mine. Of course, you can tune it however you want to for your particular circuit, but this is what I prefer, all right, is to have this, let it settle down with the averaging. All right, is to have this nice cleaner signal here. So this offset here, by the way, is um, 100 millivolts. Uh, and it's across the DC load. Now, of course, we've got 10 volts there, so it's only 100 millivolt shift. And it's, you know, we're, this is basically, think of, um, it's AC coupled right now because it's obviously running on a 10 volt supply and it'd be off the top of the scope. So when it's down here low, it's because we have a load turned on of two amps. And when it's up higher, we have a load of zero amps. So all it is is basically shifting up and down um, the volt because of the, uh, resistance of the cables that are coming from the power supply to the DC load. Uh, but if you look at the actual ringing, it's very little, and we've got two milliseconds per division here. So it's about one or just under one millisecond. But if you look, and that's the voltage, by the way, as well. If you actually look at the current, which is across the shunt, um, as opposed to a little bit of the ringing, because some of this ringing could be coming from the actual power supply itself, trying to compensate a couple of things. But if you look at the current across the shunt, it is very, very clean here. And if I now increase the time base, I can show you the leading edge time there. It is quite clean um, and quite acceptable. And if you look at the rise time from going from nothing to full load, um, it would basically, if I line this up on a um, graticule here, you'll see that from the pulse change here, we've got 80 microseconds per division, and it's basically going from zero to 100% um, in under half of a division. So under 40 microseconds, it's getting up there, which really means that, um, change the time base again, so we can see better. It really means that it's 20 microseconds per division, so it's going up there in 20, 40 microseconds. But of course, rise time is measured from um, 10 to 90%, so it's probably doing it in better than 20, uh, better than 30 microseconds or thereabouts, which is pretty good. Um, you can see the little bit of a dip with the voltage on the output um, changing slightly here, and the green trace is the gate to the uh, MOSFET. So it's driving high, uh, and when the current goes off, sorry, here it's coming on, and the MOSFET gate's going high. So you can see quite clearly here that with the gate voltage, um, because of the capacitance of the gate, it's actually taking its time to rise and the only way to really improve that would be to um, put a MOSFET driver in there and that would be more components and a little more complexity. I will try and get one and add it and maybe into a Mark II of the DC load but for this particular one I think that I'm going to be quite happy with a um, 
you know, 40, 50 millisecond, uh, sorry, 40, 50 microsecond response time, which is pretty good. And you can see here that the actual current increase is actually matching really the increase of the um, gate voltage here. So it's not a limitation of the actual output of the MOSFET. It's the, it's the speed that we're able to drive it directly from the op amp. And I think that that, for what we're doing, is perfectly okay for this, for this DC load. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, yes, if I take away the um, resistor that I put across the uh, low end of the divider network, I'm going to do that right now. I'll see what happens with that. You can see here right away that we have this extra noise introduced here. Now, the, the value of the capacitor I'm putting in here is only 390 picofarad, so it's having no impact whatsoever on the uh, basic operation of the circuit but it's enough to damp out that high frequency noise, right? I just put it back in there and it's cleaned it up. Pull it back out again, dirty again. So put it back in, nice and clean. So anyway, um, very, very simple changes. As I said, change the TLC2142 to a uh, TLE2142. Added a couple of uh, low cost uh, capacitors and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, it's quite a considerable improvement from what we had before. Uh, and uh, I'm, well, quite happy with that. So let's just quickly look at the other end of the um, signal. If I just change the triggering so that we can get that side instead. All right, so we've got a similar thing here. It's actually slightly longer on the low side going down, but you can see it's still recovering within uh, 20, 40, 20, 40, 40 odd microseconds um, from the load going off. And again, you can see the fact that the gate has got that little bit of a ripple. So we could play with a little bit more with the ringing. But as I said before, and I said again, we are on a breadboard and it has its own issues um, because of capacitance between the little metal strips and things like that. So who knows, once I put this on a proper PCB, the issues may go away. And if I have shorter cable lengths, that would also probably improve things dramatically. Um, anything else I want to show you here? No, I think that's about it. I just wanted, as I said, I just wanted to follow up because uh, a few people were asking about the response times. Uh, I wanted to show you the effect of uh, switching out the op amp for a different one and adding a couple of decouplers uh, at key points in the circuit and how much of an improvement that will make. So I think you'll agree that that's quite an improvement in the performance and it still quite happily will go into a DC load capability uh, without any impact. Let me just show you that. So this is back on the uh, potentiometer. So let me just crank it down to zero here, which is where it's at now. So for, for right now, the current isn't going quite to zero. I probably, that's because of this issue with the pot. Uh, we're drawing about a hundred, just over a hundred milliamps or something from the circuit. Um, so if I crank it up to uh, about one amp, you'll see that we're getting no oscillations or anything like that. And you can see this is set right now to four milliseconds per division. There is no uh, noise or anything there. If I up it to about two amps, now we can probably go to about three amps, but not more than that because we're paralleling our two power supplies. After that, we'll probably collapse the um, power supply because it will go into constant current mode. So we're just about 2.9 amps at 10 volts. That's about 30 watts that we're dissipating. And you can see it's as clean as a whistle, um, which is uh, quite nice. So I think that about covers it. Our circuit obviously does not um, cause any issues with the DC. Um, we're quite happy here with the AC performance. So uh, Next step, let's build it onto a proper PCB. Now, initially I'll do it on a Vera board um, just to put it into this first case with the new heat sink and everything. I've actually already been working on um, putting it into a, building up the case. I'll just show you what I've got so far. So I've got a case here, a couple of terminal blocks, pot's gonna go here. My current pot's a little bit on the big side. Um, hopefully this display is gonna work for me. It's a voltage and current display. And what I've done on the back is I've, uh, but the heat sink I showed you last time, I've cut a hole and mounted it into the uh, case. I've got a BNC for the 
AC input if I want from the waveform generator and a jack so that I can feed it 12 volts to power the thing. And if I look inside this, as you can see, I've already drilled and tapped the and put a MOSFET and a shunt resistor in here on the heatsink and I've just got to wire this up. Now this is a, um, cables for a fan so that I can have a fan running here uh, on this and get a much, much um, higher power usage out of the MOSFETs w without getting it too hot. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Anyway, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, don't, then don't, of course. Um, and I'll see you soon. So as a last bit of uh, feedback, one of the things that I found was when I put the TLE in um, as I was doing the DC check, I couldn't quite get to the uh, low volts that I had before. And uh, just doing a quick check, and it's actually because of the op amp itself, and putting the TLC back in, it obviously has a uh, better um, input bias currents and things like that than the TLE does. So I put that back in again and just tweaked the capacitors a little bit further to try and get almost the same result as I had before. So what you're looking at right now is the uh, response with the TLC2142 in there. And uh, now I can just reduce this capacitor that I had there before by a half. So, all right, so that's a lot, lot better now. And that's really all I've done. But the difference now is if I switch back to doing uh, DC, um, you're still seeing the obviously the pulse coming in. But now I can get down to 8 milliamps. Before with the other TLE2142, I wasn't able to get the current down below about 100 and odd milliamps. So now it is actually following properly. Excuse the beep. And if I set exactly um, 100 millivolts, on the input to the op amp, I should get 100 milliamps reading. Should be able to get one amp reading for 100 millivolts. And that's exactly what I have right now. Um, the oscilloscope, of course, is not triggering anymore because I have DC going into it. But if I just show you, there's still a little tiny bit of interference because I've still got the signal generator feeding an input. Let me just turn that off. Yeah, let's got rid of the noise that was being injected. So right now I'm um, at zero. If I set exactly one amp, 100 millivolts, and I've got exactly one amp. So uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it.